Bristow by Frank Dickens, featuring Michael Williams as Bristow and Rodney Bewes as Jones, with Owen Brenman and Dora Bryan. The Girl in the Yellow Overcoat. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, what time are you through up there? <laughs> Don't through up there. <laughs> Smiling constant in the heaven, I'm stuck here till half past seven. <laughs> time and time and half. Twinkle, twinkle, Milky Way, you've never worked a ten-hour day. Bet you wish that you were me. I've earned six pounds fifty-three. <laughs> <laughs> when whoever it was called on us to deck the halls with boughs of holly, tis the season to be jolly, tra la 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 la. I'm sure he meant well, but hadn't reckoned on this modern society, for the punters nowadays start to jolly things along far too early, and for far too long a period. The build-up in this neck of the woods started as early as mid-November, when I was waiting for a train at East Winsley Station, and, upon looking round, realised the platform was unusually crowded. Good morning, Mr. Station Master. Please, you move along there, please. Move along. You'll have to speak up. His earmuffs, adequate against the chills of winter though they are, do not help in matters of hearing. In the unlikely event of one of your trains ever arriving at this station, and me happening to turn to look over my shoulder, it is quite conceivable that it might come and go without my even realising it. You have my sympathies, but you shop early for Christmas people are, to put it bluntly, more trouble than you're worse. British high-speed rail are more interested in the regular commuter. Uh, one who has to catch a train to his place of employment than folks like yourself. Now, move along, please. Keep moving. It is obvious you do not recognise me. The... Yeah. Uh, Heavy scarf, breathing filter, and dark glasses, plus the aforementioned earmuffs, might be the explanation. Oh, it's you. <laughs> I wear the glasses because I suffer from snow blindness, and should there be a sudden fall, I would hate to tumble onto the track. I realise I'm being rather silly because I will be perfectly safe there. Trains so seldom passing this way. Stand aside, please. I've no time to bandy words with you on a day like this. You're a lucky man, Mr Station Master. Why is that? You don't see the faces of the people standing at your back as you stroll up and down the platform. If looks could kill... Morning, Bristow. How about Jones? You've done well for Christmas cards this year. <laughs> row upon row. Tastefully strung up on string across the window and blocking out any daylight that he's endeavouring to get into the room. Not bad. It shows I have a few friends left. Yeah, you've done better than I have this year. Seems so, doesn't it? Yeah, it must be some sort of office record. You are more popular than I would have believed. <laughs> Please, Bristow, you embarrass me. Yeah, I'll embarrass you still further. Reading the top row from left to right, the cards read, uh, Happy Easter, get well soon, be my Valentine. Ah, uh, yes. Congratulations on your anniversary. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, 1995. Bristow, if I choose... Mr Fudge? Oh, he's not in, sir. Can I, can I help? I doubt it. What's your name? Uh, Jones, sir. The name's Jones. Thank you, Mr Jones. Will you ask Mr Fudge to give me a call when he gets in? The name is Moorcroft. It's in connection with order number DB49265. Certainly, Mr Morpro. Thank you. Say, pleasant young man. Hmm? One of the directors, wasn't he? I should imagine so. Smart suit, dazzling smile, typical director, typical con man. Bristow, what happened to order number DB49265? <clears throat> I take it you want me to look it up. Oh, if you wouldn't mind. There is a search fee of five pounds. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it's time we did something about this order. 
There's a heavy penalty clause comes into force on the 1st of January. Jones, we had this nonsense last year, and it completely spoiled our Christmas. Didn't we promise it would never happen again? Suppose we had a real go at it. A sudden splurge of energy. A frenzied attack. Good idea. Well, uh, uh, looking through my diary, I'm busy this week. Well, not today. Uh, you made me jump. Today, you say? <sighs> Tell you what. We'll have a relaxed tea break, filling ourselves with plenty of carbohydrates to give us the energy to cope with it. Yes, yes. Plus, yes. I'll have a couple of Mrs. Purdy's flapjacks. Can we do the clerical equivalent of spinach to pop out? I don't care what we have. Let's get on with something. Jones, what's all this eager beaver stuff? You are behaving in a rather curious manner this morning. Why? Bristow, do you believe in love at first sight? It, it takes a certain kind of person to fall in love at first sight. And if you were one of those people, uh, bingo. <laughs> Lucky you. It's happened to me, Bristow. I'm one of the chosen few. Oh, yeah, be ridiculous. You're not the type. What's that supposed to mean? People who fall in love on sight are impetuous. The last thing anyone would call you is impetuous. You are more... <laughs> humdrum, dull, oh. grey, flat. Everything that someone who falls in love on sight is not. In spite of what you say, I am in love. Who is the unfortunate lady? A girl in a yellow overcoat. Our eyes met on the platform at Guffnell Park Station, Platform 5. And? What do you mean, and? What happened? That's all. That's all? A girl in a yellow overcoat? Love, L-O-V-E. Daft, D-A-F-T. Chin, your eyes met on Platform 5 at Guffnell Park Station. I think, as Shakespeare said... This is indeed the stuff the dreams are made on. I think she's a shop early for Christmas time. Holy mackerel. They're the worst. You can't afford that sort of woman on the money you earn here. Don't try and tell me what I can afford. You don't know what I can afford. I know exactly what you can afford. Some weeks ago, I found a wedge slip at the back of one of your drawers. What? You what? And from it, I worked out exactly what you take home. Dear and I'll me. tell you this. It doesn't run to a shop early for Christmas type well, you can only run to tea and a chocolate biscuit in the morning and coffee and a macaroon in the afternoons. A shop early for Christmas type won't go Dutch. Mark my words. Morning, Mr Jones. Good oh, morning, Mr Bristow. You're late. Morning. Oh, well, I stopped to pick up some of the stuff for the office get-together. Oh. Uh, whoops. Sorry, Mr Jones. Oh, dear. Office get-together? What office get-together? Ah, uh, Mr Jones... You might as well tell him. Now you've started. Um, we're having a small get-together with accounts. Oh, excellent. Their place or ours. And when? Their place. You know, we're not allowed decorations, and you can't have a get-together without decorations. No, it's on Friday. Starts at five and goes on. The password is down with the management. Here, it sounds as if it's in an advanced stage. I'm surprised it's the first I've heard of it. We've been keeping a low profile in case Fudge gets to hear about yeah, it. Ah, good thinking. Warm and plenty of hard bake. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Purdy. Two lumps, please. A couple of meringues and a gingerbread man. Jones, what's the spending? Chocolate biscuit, please. Cheer up, Mr. Jones. You have got a long face this morning. Unrequited love, Mrs. Purdy. Unrequited love, eh? Well, there's a lot of it about. Brister. Is it necessary to repeat everything you're told in confidence? Can't anyone keep a secret in this place? I can. You keep a secret. Don't make me laugh. Office get together. Whoops. You're as big a blubber mouth as a Bristol. Ooh, he's in a bad mood. <laughs> Unrequited love, you say? He saw a pair of laughing eyes on the platform at Guffnall Park today. Guffnall Park, mm. eh? Oh, Guffnall Park. There's a coincidence. That's where I met my laughing eyes in the shape of Mr. Purdy 17 years ago next week. I doubt if he was shopping early for Christmas. Uh, shoplifting for Christmas, more like. <laughs> uh, he was in charge of the canteen there, and he could carry three cups in each hand. There aren't many people can do that, you know. Three cups. He can't do it now, of course, with his arthritis. Whoever thought I'd meet my nemesis on Platform 5 on Guffner Park Station? Platform 5? Why, that's where... Re oh, no, morning, Miss Fudge. What the devil is going on? Why is everyone sitting around? And why are those Christmas cards strung up across the window? They belong to Mr Jones. I don't care who they belong to. Take them down at once. 
Ooh, there's another one in a bad mood. I'd best be off. Oh, finish your narrative, Mrs. Purdy. Tell us about Mr. Purdy, your knight in shining armour. He didn't have none of that. On our wedding day, he turned up in a draped suit with a velvet collar, bootlace tie, drain pipe trousers, fluorescent socks and blue suede shoes. Came straight from work, Eddie. Oh. <laughs> hey, only joking, Mrs. Purdy. Only joking. And that, you might say, was that. Except that a couple of days later, as I entered the office, Jones, who had taken of late to wandering the corridors like a moonstruck calf, or gazing into space like a frog on a lily pad, sprang to his feet, his eyes glittering. Brister, hmm? it's fate. Fate? What's fate? I saw her again today. The girl in the yellow overcoat. On the platform? No, in the street. Not far from here. Our eyes met once again. It's fate. It's hardly fate. It's stalking. Yes, but it shouldn't concern you. You're a married man. Says who? Jones. The lady with the spectacles. When a crowd of us came round that night to play cards, you turned her photograph to the wall. That doesn't mean to say... Down with the management. Bring it in. And don't keep using the password. It's supposed to be saved for the party. Holy mackerel. That's a lot of drink. Oh, there's plenty more where this came from. Now, the girls from the pool are in on it, by the way. How many people are we expecting? Ah, how many grains of sand in the desert? How much rice is there in China? How many stars in the skies above? Down with the management. Miss Sunman, the password is supposed to be kept for the party, not used indiscriminately. Are we to bring presents? Presents? Arms for the poor, yes, but certainly not presents. Since when did you have any say in the running of it? You only got in because of Blabbermouth Hewitt. I said so. Now you seem to be taking over. That's because I'm a natural-born leader. And I hardly need to remind you, I come before you alphabetically. There's lots of people come before you. Arbuthnot, Askey, Armstrong, Abercrombie. Arnold. Arnold. Sorry, Mr. Aitchison. What's in a name? (laughs) That's what love does for you, Hewitt. Seen her again, have you, Mr. Jones? Seen who? The girl in the yellow overcoat. Brist! Mm. You've told him, haven't you? Oh, yeah. How many other people have you told? You tell someone something in confidence, before you turn round, it's all over the building. Fishwives! Fishwives! That's what you are! Fishwives! Oh. Anyone wants me, I'm with Mr Moorcroft. Who's the girl in the yellow overcoat? Miss Sunman. You heard Mr Jones, didn't you? You saw his face, how upset he was. I don't want him upset anymore. I don't want to spoil a relationship. I have to work with him all day, remember? He's a clerk with special needs. But who is she? She's a girl he met on Guffnall Park Station. I've seen her! Uh, Platform 5? You know her? I don't know her. I've seen her, that's all. You can't miss her. She's beautiful, like a supermodel. Uh, She's a shop early for Christmas type. uh, I don't think Mr Jones stands much of a chance there. (laughs) She's like the girl from Ipanema. Hmm? When she walks down the platform, all the men's heads turn to look after her. Ah. I should be so lucky. I doubt whether men would look at me if I threw myself in front of a train. Oh, I'm sure they would. But enough of such pessimism. You don't want to fill your pretty little head with thoughts like that. Did he say pretty? He did, yes, he did. I said don't fill your pretty little head with... (laughs) Did he say pretty again? He did. He said pretty twice. (laughs) I feel pretty, oh, so pretty, I feel pretty. You'd better lock it. She could easily return. She's definitely got the hots for you. Uh, I don't wish to encourage it. Women and business don't mix. (laughs) Women are good only for plays, books and films. And soap operas. Their heads are full of shoes, hairdos and jewellery. And they get in the way of a career. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Hmm? You talking about a career. (laughs) Dream on. (laughs) Insolent young pup. How dare he laugh at me having thought of a career. I suddenly decided to take a crack at order number DB49265. If I could wrap that up before Christmas, it would show them that my thoughts of a career are not just pie in the sky. Uh, Mary, I want gun and fames. I'm afraid Mary's not in this week. May I help? Uh, that depends on who you are. Oh. I believe there was a saying during World War II, careless talk cost lives. Mm. I don't believe such warnings are current in our modern society, but I should like to know to whom I am speaking. Mm. I'm Mary's replacement. And your name is? Guess. Guess. 
Did you say guess? <laughs> I should like to remind you, whatever your name is, that this is a business call of the utmost priority. Hmm. Give me a clue. Something, 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 double something, something. Cruella. Cruella? Yes or no, Cruella? Do I sound cruel? Yes or no? Nearly right. It's Fenella. Are you going to the thingy tomorrow? A get-together. I shall probably show up. It is, as they say, the season to be jolly. Tra la 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 la, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Isn't there something about mistletoe in that carol? Oh, possibly. It does embrace most of the Christmas paraphernalia, and I'm sure mistletoe is in there somewhere. Mm. I'll bring some with me, oh. just in case someone's forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> See you there. Yeah. <laughs> now, how can I help you? Yeah, I want the Good Samaritan's helpline. Oh. Good Samaritan's Helpline. Can we be of assistance? I'm having some trouble with that order number. DB49265. Not you again. Hello? 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 Down with the management. Postboy. That's supposed to be a password. Not an everyday phrase or saying. How can he have a password that's passed into common usage? Couple of letters, sir. These letters appear to have been tampered with. Oh, no, we wouldn't have touched those. We only steam open the ones that are drenched in perfume. Um, well, what's this drawing pen stuck in your desktop for? That represents a buying clerk and is allowed to move in any direction. This paper clipper represents the establishment and moves in one direction uh, only. What are you doing? I was playing war games yesterday. What is going on out here? <coughs> if you've delivered the mail, postboy, I suggest you get about your business. Here I go, sir. Watch my dust. Cheers, Mr. B. Yes. Uh, Bristol, has Jones returned from Mr. Moorcroft's office yet? No, sir. Well, tell him to come and see me as soon as he gets back. Yes, sir. Uh, that man will be the death of me. He's only got to open his mouth and I can feel my hackles rise. Yeah, but what is Jones playing at? Acting as a go-between, carrying messages from Fudge to Moorcroft and vice versa? This is not the job for a buying clerk. This is the job for a messenger boy. This is way over and above the call of duty. I determined to have it out with him. Jones! What is all this Moorcroft business? What's it to you? I asked you a simple question. I would welcome a civil answer. It's Mr Moorcroft, if you don't mind. Let's have a little respect for one of our directors. He calls me Mr Jones. We are trying to make some progress on DB49265. We happen to get on well together. Are you crazy, Jones? Nobody gets on with a director. They're a breed apart. Villains, the lot of them. Oh, nonsense. Read your newspapers. It's scarce a day goes by. You don't read about a company director being sent down for something or other. The open prisons are book solid with directors. Face the facts. And as for someone like you, thinking you are getting on well with a director... Well, we It are. makes the mind not only boggle, but keel over. Oh, dear. We're talking chalk and cheese stuff here. The trouble is, you are starting to believe it. And that can lead to trouble. Mark my words. Do you think so? Well, you might be in for a surprise. And it might come sooner than you expect. Password, please. May the Chester Perry building be struck by lightning and the directors perish in the ruins. That was last year's. Try again. Hmm. Down with the management. Pass, friend. Well, Mr. Brister, mm. see anything you fancy? <laughs> you must be joking. Chester Perry's is renowned for the plainness of its female employees. It's an occupational hazard, I'm afraid. You can say that again. I don't know where they find them. <laughs> and look at them, gathered round the notice board. More pathetic bunch of women I've never seen. Uh, Hewitt, let's change the subject. We haven't come here to talk shop. I can tell by your furtive manner that you have a question to ask. 
Let's have it. Yeah, Mr. Bristow, I haven't been here long enough to know, but at this firm, does everyone give each other Christmas presents? Yes. Well, there's nothing laid down about it. It depends on the mood you're in. Well, what sort of thing would I get for Mr. Jones? Yeah, let's see. Pocket calculator, perhaps? Oh. A briefcase? Number oh. out? Or a pair mm. of socks? Yeah, or one of those felt-tip pens you oh. get from the stores downstairs. And that's more the sort of thing I had in mind. Mm, I've already got one. Mine's in blue, oh. but you can get them in red. Oh, well, red it is. Well, excuse me, I'm off to mingle. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mr. Christie. Oh. Oh. I'm suddenly getting in a Christmas mood. Uh. The Chester Perry Glee Club are on the pavement down there singing Christmas carols. Yeah, oh, quick, the fire bucket. We may catch them before they move on. Oh, don't be like that. Yes. It's peace on earth time. Wouldn't it be romantic if we had a white Christmas? It certainly would. I love throwing snowballs at people. I sell them this. Splat. <laughs> I'm making slides on the pavement. Oh. Wee crash. <laughs> yes, uh, quite. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to you. It's shaping up to be a great party. When I mingle, I like to mix with the accounts department. There's always a hope that some of the money will rub off onto you. Atkins, on my right, is, even though he's their boss, the only one I know. Atkins! Uh, you people in accounts throw excellent parties. Thanks, Bristow. I needed something to cheer myself up. I've had a bad day. Ah. I had to give some of the kids that have started here straight from school their first wage packets. It's always sad, the tears that come into their eyes when they see their first stoppages. Yeah, but it must have its good side. I would enjoy knowing exactly how much money everyone in the firm takes home. Even that has its drawbacks. If you know how much everyone is earning, you tend to worry about whether they're living beyond their means or not. But if, for example, I thought you had contributed anything at all towards the cost of this delicious fruit punch we are drinking, <laughs> I would probably have a sleepless night. Yeah, well, would you like a little more? Oh, I will have a little more, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, no, Good Lord, hmm? what on earth is Jones doing? I, I think it's going he's letting one of the directors in, eh? and he's bringing him over here. Well, it's, it's very kind of you to join us, Mr Moorcroft. Well, it's very nice of you to ask him, Mr Jones. Uh, if you follow me, I'll introduce you to uh, two of the gang. Oh, thank you. Um, allow me to introduce you to Mr Atkins, hmm? accounts, Atkins. and Bristow. Yeah. This is Mr Moorcroft. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr Atkins. Oh. I know you by reputation, of course. Ooh. Merry Christmas. Uh, Mr Bristow and I have met before. Yeah, indeed. Yes, yeah. When I popped my head round your door to speak to Mr Fudge the other day. Mm. Yes. Merry Christmas, Mr Bristow. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, sir. Speaking of Mr Fudge, I don't see him here. Is he... Uh, is he detained elsewhere, or, or is he one of those heads of department that doesn't approve of office get-togethers? <laughs> How shall I put it? Mr Fudge is not a great socialiser, sir. <laughs> you can say that again. We had him and his wife round to dinner last month. Hardly said a word the whole evening. Oh, is that a fact? Well, we've never met so sure. Well, Bristow, I told you I had a surprise up my sleeve, didn't I? And you didn't believe me. Perhaps next time you'll... Good heavens. Over there. Come in, coming in through the door. It's the girl in the yellow overcoat. I? Am I dreaming? Excuse me. Gangway, stand aside. Uh, I'm afraid it's me that has to be excused. Uh, the lady in the yellow overcoat is my wife. Oh, really? Uh, she's been doing some modelling in town this week, and as we're going to the theatre tonight, I arranged to meet her here. I hope Mr Jones doesn't mind. Uh, over here. Uh, over here. Hello, precious. I'd like you to meet. Time! That man by the door. He's the one I was telling you about. The one that stares. Call the police, darling. Do something. What are you saying? The man by the door. That's him. The stalker. The stalker? What? Is it now? Uh, look, uh, somebody get a chair. Keep calm, darling. Keep calm. The police! Call the police! Uh, just a minute, darling. I know the man. Let me have a word before we call the police. Oh, he's coming over here. Has no one offered the lady a drink? Uh, Jones, I'd like a word with you. Uh, in private. I don't understand. Follow me. Uh, what, what's going on? Jones! Be careful, darling. Oh. Easy does it, Mrs. Moorcroft. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I'll get you a drink. I've been terrified. I saw him on the platform at Gaffnell Park. And there he was, just undressing me with his eyes. Jones! <laughs> there was no need to stand and listen to her incoherent story. I hate hearing my friends being maligned when there is no one there to defend them. <laughs> Discreetly, I slipped away to join the punch bowl. It was as I was struggling for possession of the ladle that I felt my elbow being gripped. Hello. Nice to meet you. Ah, <laughs> Cruella, the lady of the telephone. 
It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I hope you remembered our appointment with the mistletoe. Oh, I did indeed. Oh, but let's get at it then. Where is it? I wasn't allowed to bring it. Not allowed. Not allowed. Whatever happened to women's lib? Did Mrs. Pankhurst wage her battle for freedom in vain? Not allowed. Nonsense. Who wouldn't allow it? A jealous boyfriend, an angry lover? An irate husband. She flirts with you and all, does she? <laughs> she flirts with everyone. Oh. <laughs> she ought to be called Flirtella. <laughs> that voice of hers. Drive me wild, that voice. <laughs> Don't be daft, Reggie. This is my husband. It, uh, oh. Reginald. Get, oh. I consider it both an honour and a privilege to meet you, sir. This gentleman works here. Does he? <laughs> Is that a fact? If you work here, you must know whether there's a Mr. Bristow in the room. I am Bristow. I'm Witherspoon. Not Witherspoon of Gun and Fang. That's right. C order number DB49265. <laughs> You're nothing like I imagine. No, neither are you. I had you down as a little thin man. <laughs> and I had you down as a big fat chap. <laughs> Do you realise we've been writing to each other for nearly a year? And we are still no nearer a solution. Ah, but we are. We are? It can all be done by a few strokes of the pen. It can? Yes, and if we had it here now... My office is across the corridor. The order is on my desk. Would you... Could you... Lead on, MacBristow. Oh, MacBristow. <laughs> And in that selfsame moment, the bells of the Seaman's Mission on Corner, donated by Sir Reginald Chester Perry, our beloved firm's founder, began to chime their seasonal greetings. And to the strains of, "'Tis the season to be jolly," Mr Witherspoon and I made our way over to the buying department to sort out <laughs> order number DB49265. <laughs> <sighs> and as someone said to someone in a book I read somewhere, a Merry Christmas to one and all. Bristow was written by Frank Dickens and featured Michael Williams as Bristow, Rodney Bewes as Jones, Owen Brenman as Hewitt, Dora Bryan as Mrs Purdy, Katie Odie as Miss Sunman, John Glover as Fudge and Atkins, Robert Bathurst as Moorcroft, Anna Mountford as Fenella, Simon Schatzberger as the Postboy, Peter Kelly as Witherspoon, and Zena Eat as the Yellow Overcoat Girl. The music was composed and performed by John Whitehall. The sound recording was by Graham Harper, the director, Neil Cargill. <laughs>